Hey everyone, uh, in this video we're going to go through a formal uh, delta epsilon proof uh, for a limit. And we're going to try to be um, as formal as we can. So before we do the proof, let me write down the definition of uh, a limit right below. I'm going to write it in parentheses. I'm going to use uh, you know, shorthand notation for this. So if you've never seen it, no, no worries, I'll explain it. So basically, we say that the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to l. This means, l here is a real number, by the way. It has to be a real number. This means that for all little epsilon greater than 0, so that upside down a means for all. It's really cool. Uh, there exists, so that backwards e means there exists, a delta greater than 0 such that for all x and r, with so for every x where the distance between x and c is less than delta. So remember, the absolute value of x minus c is the distance between x and c. So whenever this distance is less than delta, then the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. So that's, that's the definition of a limit. The first time you see it, it's really, really intimidating. So now we're going to go through uh, the proof and, and the structure. So first, we're going to figure out the proof, and then we're going to, to write the proof. So usually, you do the scratch work first. So the scratch work says, um, if this is true, then this is true, right? So that's what it's saying. So if this is true, this is true. So whenever the distance between x and c is less than delta, so what's our c here? Our c is 3, okay? So whenever this is true, then we need this to be true, okay? So f of x is this piece. This is your f of x. This will be 2x plus 8. And this is our L. And we want this to be less than epsilon. So what we're basically doing here is figuring out delta. Once we figure out delta, we can write the proof, and it's just a formality, okay? So, so C here is 3, so you write this down, and then you do f of x minus L, f of x minus L. Just keep going here, make this look like this, and you got it. So 8 minus 14 is negative 6, so you get 2x minus 6, then less than epsilon. So now you want to uh, make this look like this. I guess we can pull out a 2, right? Good stuff. I haven't done this yet, so it's kind of kind of fun. Um, yes, yes. Now to make it match, you can divide by 2. So you get x minus 3 less than epsilon over 2. So if this is true, then this is true, right? So delta must be equal to epsilon over 2. Okay, so that's going to be our delta in the proof. So step one when you're doing any delta epsilon proof is to figure out delta. So you start by writing x minus this number less than delta. Then you do f of x minus this less than epsilon. And you just keep writing it down, right? Just keep writing it down and make it match. And once it matches, just do matching, right? Just do matching. And that, and that is your, your delta. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. And then now we'll go ahead and do the proof. So got to remember it, delta is epsilon over 2, right? Hopefully this eraser works. It's, it's, yeah, it's wet, wet cloth. All right, so proof. Oh, that's a wet paper towel. So proof. So we have to show it's true uh, for all epsilon. So you start by saying let epsilon be greater than 0. You can say for all epsilon greater than 0. You can be really pro and say let epsilon greater than 0 be arbitrary. When people write this, though, you know, it's usually understood that it's arbitrary. Now we have to show uh, delta exists. Well, epsilon exists. So certainly delta exists because our delta is simply epsilon over 2. So we've shown the existence of a delta. Now we have to say that whenever this is true, then this is true. So then for all x and r with the distance between x and c, so c here was 3, less than delta, we have... So I've just written this down, I'm just saying we're assuming this is true, right? You can also say if this is true, and then you say then, that also works. I just wanted to be a little more formal. I figured why not take the opportunity, just throw in a little bit of extra, you know, rigor. We have, it's not a comma, and now we have to show this is true. So f of x in this problem is 2x plus 8. L is 14, so minus 14. Good stuff. I love this stuff. Right here, you can subtract these, and you get minus 6. So you get 2x minus 6. Notice I didn't do this, right? That's super wrong, right? You have to show that. You have to show that. So that's the most common mistake when people are learning how to write 
um, delta epsilon proof. So you can't just put less than epsilon. You have to show it, right? You have to show it. That, that, that's the beautiful part. Now here, there's not much you can do, but if you think back to your scratch work, there is something you can do. You can pull out the two, so you get two, and then x minus three. And then, and then, check this out. X minus three is less than delta, right? X, the absolute value of x minus three is less than delta. So two times that is less than two delta. And it's, oh, so you just multiply by two. That's how people understand it, but that's not really the way to think about it, if that makes sense. So for most people to understand the step, they say, oh, okay, x minus three is less than delta. So you put a two here, put a two here, so that's what's going on here. Yeah, I guess, but it's easier just to think about it. It's like this. This is less than delta and the two hangs out, right? The two hangs out. Delta is epsilon over two, so this is equal to two, right, that's up here epsilon over two, and boom, the twos cancel, and that completes the delta epsilon proof. So that's a, a full delta epsilon proof. Um, I hope this helps. That's it.